Danny, it seems like Christmas never happened. Till it was a good Christmas. Dolly did very well. Hey, well, I wasn't thinking about the food. Must be the only time of year you don't. No, I was thinking about us. All together. You know, the vicar and Amos and Henry and Jesse. You remember me saying to you that Christmas wasn't what it was? Well, I knew there was something missing. No, and it wasn't sitting round the fire, roasting apples and telling ghost stories. No. No, it was folk. You can't really have a really good Christmas unless you've got a house full of people. <laughs> of course, in my young days, families were much bigger. I'm not sorry I don't have to cook for ten every day. <laughs> Yes. What's going on? Will someone open the door oh. for me? Dad, yes. my hand's all over flour. All, right, all right, love, I'm coming. There oh. we are. <laughs> yeah, we'll have to make a bonfire of this lot. Hey, those decorations should have been down last Saturday. I know that. It's bad luck to keep them up after Twelfth Night. It'll be my bad luck if she drops that on the floor. Oh. Open the door oh, for oh, her. Sorry. Oh, don't talk to me about bad luck. Not with pantomime coming on. Anyway, would you get the paper decorations down? Ah, but those are still decorations, love. Well, how long does bad luck last for? Till next Christmas. Oh, thanks for the encouragement. Just what I needed. Oh, dear. What did you do with those bits of scenery that were too tall? Oh, I just cut the tops off. What's little well W.I. going to say about that? <laughs> hey, that's the vicar's problem. He gave me the go-ahead. Dad. Oh, nice. Isn't there somebody you can do at the village hall with the dress rehearsal tonight? Well... Uh, and don't forget that knife. Uh, you know... <laughs> It was very thoughtful of Joe to give me that, Annie. Months ago I said I wanted one of them. Well, I'll have another go at my beanstalk. Well, if it isn't young Jack, the handsomest lad in Merrydale. Oh, good morning, humble villagers. Isn't it a lovely day? Uh, hey, have you thought of anywhere where I can borrow an alpenstock? Get yeah, Grandad to make you one. I don't know what they look like. What do you want one for? To climb up the beanstalk. You see, we all thought it'd be a good laugh if I would dressed up like a mountaineer. You know, climbing rope, rucksack, hat with a feather in it. The lot. Oh, love, I wish you'd told me this before. I'm having trouble enough with that beanstalk. Well, I've got Henry's rucksack and I've stuck a feather in one of Matt's hats. A winter sports shop, for your only chance. I don't think they still make them. Oh, they call them ice axes now. How do you know? <laughs> I was talking to a climber last summer. Oh, well, I haven't got time to go chasing off to Otten. It's a pity it were a good idea. <sighs> <laughs> well, there you are. Hey, there's no need for you to do that. Oh, I have to do something to earn me keep. Do Christmas cards count as decorations? What do you mean, for count? Well, I've just been told that I'm in for a year's bad luck for not getting decorations down sooner. Oh, I. Grandad, I'll bet. Uh, Get away, you're not superstitious, are you? Well, I'm not chancing me luck, either. <laughs> oh, I hate throwing cards away. It always seems such a waste. Well, there's places you can give them to, you know. Hospitals and such. Mm, I wanted to frame some of them. <laughs> not that one. That's Joe's. Hmm. Trust him. Ah, well, you can't hoard everything. I used to. I used to say, one day when I'm old... I shall take them all out and look at them and remember. <laughs> Best not. Will you be all right on your own, now that Mum's gone to live in the Bahamas? A woman has to go where her husband is. I've been on my own before, you know. It isn't as if I didn't have my health and strength. I know, but I don't like to think of you all alone in that house. Well, I'm not afraid of being on my own. You see, when you know a place and you know where everything is... Aye. Hey, Vicar, you shouldn't be humping furniture around. I'm certainly not letting you do it. This chair's for the cottage seat. I borrowed it from Mrs. Ratcliffe. Uh, I thought I recognised it. Everything all right? Well, I haven't been in yet. Just let's get the key. Oh, there's no need. Door's open. Well, it shouldn't be. Mrs. Armitage gave me the key last night in the wool pack, and she said Mrs. Atkins had locked up. Apparently no one did. The place looks as if it's been vandalised. Wasn't someone supposed to be clearing up after the rehearsal? Oh, supposed to be I. Who? Oh, uh, Doris Heaton. Ah, and she should have kept the key and all. Well, she was here when I left last night. What happened? Oh, I, she had some silly argument with uh, Mary Lum in the dressing room. Something about standing in front of her during the scene. Oh, so then she said, I'm not going to have any more to do with the pantomime, and off she went. Why didn't someone tell me Princess Melanie must have a lady in waiting? <laughs> Don't worry, Vicar. <laughs> Doris Eaton will be in the pantomime. The last thing she does. You're sure? 
I'll tell you something. The night before she and her husband got wed, she said she wasn't going to be at the wedding. She did that just to scare him. Yes, well, perhaps we should drop Mrs. Heaton from the tidying up and key mining roster. Oh, no, because she wouldn't like that. Oh, no. <laughs> Doris Heaton is not going to allow Judgment Day to happen unless she's got a big part in it. Obviously, things can't go on like this. I just had to take my courage in both hands and go back to Mrs. Arnold. Morning. Good morning. Uh, good morning. Uh, sorry. Uh, morning. I, I wonder if I could have a word with you. Of course. You see, perhaps if we went inside. I've got my younger stuff work with flu. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. And if it's about the cleaning, the answer's still no. I did wonder. As a special favour to me personally. My husband wouldn't let me. I didn't mean permanently, perhaps just an hour or two this morning. I'm busy this morning. You see, the hall's been left in a terrible state. Chairs mm. everywhere. I'm not surprised. Cigarette packets, crisp packets. Some folk have no consideration. Cigarette ends stamped out on your floor. They never. Not to mention chewing gum. Trodden in. No. I don't know how to get rid of it. I'm gone. Right. Now, just you show me this chewing gum. Ah, wouldn't say no. Didn't think you would. Hmm. What a dolly. All right, I thought so. It's cutting the way she gets the pastry, dipping on top to the stuff on the bottom. All oh, right. Can't have stir a mince pies now, are we? I always were. You'll not be sorry when Christmas is over, will you? Huh? You'll have upstairs to yourselves again. Oh, I don't mind. Aunt Jess has been very tactful. Got a soft spot for her, really. I feel sorry for her, and all now she's on her own. You're never suggesting she lives here permanent. Well, I know Dolly feels responsible for her. No. Well, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. I saw that Morris Westrop going into the shop this morning. For no reason why he shouldn't, does it? I never said there were. But today must be days moving into home farm. Uh, speak to you? Well, it's past time of day. Seems a civil enough sort of person to me. More the Beck and Nail type than Trevor Thatcher, you'd say. You can't tell much about a man from passing time of day now, can you? Shove over, will you? Have you noticed, Amos? Eh, there's always two of us behind the bar when the place is empty and only one when the place is full. Oh, that's something I've been wondering about for years. Any nearer a conclusion? Well, it did cross my mind as one of us is... <laughs> no. Well, one of us is not too keen on hard work. Well, eh? You're a great one for putting words into other folks' mouth, Mr Wilkes. <laughs> So, this is the great day. Yeah, that's tomorrow. Today's only dress rehearsal. Oh, well, if you're into the pantomime. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is the day we finally just fall to that turkey. Ah, it's lasted well as that. Oh, and that's the understatement of the year. And very economical. First Christmas I've ever had two Christmas dinners. <laughs> but not that I'm complaining. I should hope not. <laughs> A Christmas to remember, eh? Go now on. then, Len. I love half. On nights this week, are they? Oh, dear. That means you'll miss the pantomime. I can't lose the sleep over that. Hmm. We, we, we'll give you a sample in here, eh, Amos? Oh, now then, Mr. Wilkes, don't be daft. We're not in the same bits, well, hardly. Well, go on, you can see he needs cheering him up. Uh, shall I give him a quick verse of the fee four forms? Now, don't start on that again, Mr. Wilkes. You'll only get yourself confused again. Oh, all right. <laughs> What's he got to be so cheerful about? Just look at that. Stamped right into the floor, it's criminal. They stick it under seats anywhere, the hooligans. How'd you get rid of chewing gum? Ah, just you wait and see. Len brought me home some stuff from work. It's the only thing I've ever known shifted. <laughs> so long as it doesn't eat its way through the floorboards, too. I'll just pop home and get it. Success? I'll let you know in a minute, Vicar. Right, we'll have a demonstration then. Ah, oh, there's that. That's a splendid piece of work. Yeah. Now, let it down again. Right. Well, fairly quickly, this has to be a fast scene change. Oh. oh. No, I'm, I'm sorry, Vicar, I think the wire's stuck in the screw eye. You won't be able to do that on the night. Yeah, yes, it is. It's stuck in the screw eye. 
Do you uh, think you can sort it out? I think so. Give them time. We haven't got that much. Ah, Dolly. How's my principal boy this morning? You can't keep away, can you? <laughs> hey, what's that long, thin, green thing? Your beanstalk. Oh, you could have fooled me. <laughs> hey, I couldn't get an alpenstock. Ah, oh, well, it's not vital. I just thought it'd be a nice touch, that's all. Well, it's not the sort of thing there's much call for in Beckendale. Ah, it's no good, Vicar. The wire's knotted and stuck. I'll have to cut it and start again. I see no point in living in a place unless you try to become part of it. Get to know everyone. Join all the local societies. Bowls, club or WI, take your choice. <laughs> what do you do with yourself? Well, when I first retired to Beckendale, my main concern was to find enough to keep me occupied, so I took up bird watching. <laughs> No, I never have time for it. Oh, like a few other things I could mention. Well, it's always been one of my hobbies, uh, or that and any other form of natural history. Do you think we might uh, join forces sometime? I'd like to. I'm no expert, mind. Strictly a bird watcher as opposed to an ornithologist. <laughs> it's funny, you don't often find a farmer who has the time or the inclination for it. To me, it's all part of the same thing, all part of the cycle. What happens if your ideas conflict with those of the company you work for? Well, if that happens, or oh, it doesn't often. Uh, after all, it's part of my job to tell them what's best for local conditions. If it happens, well, uh, they're the boss. Well, the last one they sent weren't too careful about treading on all the folks' toes. Well, that's why I want to become part of the place, get to know people. Then, if there are changes to be made... Well, you'd better get younger generation on your side, then they're all for change. <clears throat> Anyone know where I can get an alpenstock? What? <laughs> Ordinary ice axe, any good? You haven't got one. Well, one of the young chaps at the hall has. Oh, it's for pantomime. Oh, I'll give him a ring, get him to get in touch with you. Mrs. Gilbeck, Emmerdale Farm. Oh, I could hug you. I'm oh, really I assure you, I wouldn't raise any objections. <laughs> Beckydale, 417. Bye-bye. Goodbye, Dolly, love. I can see you're preparing the ground very well, Mr. Westrom. Well, I've done a bit of farming in my time. There's a lot of folk who'll be interested in what harvest you're expecting. Ah, well done. Ah, there's a lot more to clean in than meets the eye. Everyone to his own trade. I expect there's more to your job than just taking services. Yeah, a bit more. <laughs> Florrie, now mm. we're alone. I'd like to say how glad I am that you were able to have your mother home for Christmas Day. Worst Christmas I ever had. It didn't go well? Len spent as long as he could at Moorpark, then slept it up in the afternoon in his tool shed. I'm very sorry. Oh, it's all right. You meant well. At the very least, you made her feel wanted. You've no ideas. You couldn't wait to get back to Sunnyside. Kept saying they treated her properly there. My turkey were overdone, potatoes were underdone, gravy were too thin, sprouts too salty. And to crown it all, she made Len get car out in the middle of tea and drive her back. Didn't want to be late for her bingo. I told her they wouldn't have bingo Christmas Day, but she wouldn't listen. Of course, when we got there, there weren't no bingo. I suppose it's no use my saying that the, the good we do is often not apparent at first sight. <laughs> Not much. Still, they say God moves in a mysterious way. That's it. Right. Hey, how did it get into this state? No one to keep an eye on things since you left. Mm. They only have to see me standing there waiting to lock up. I've seen great talking lads turn around and give hand with chairs. I never set out. Just looked at them. <laughs> yes, well, never be the same without you, Flory. Couldn't you reconsider? What are you doing here? I told you not to come here no more. You can blame me for that. Along with lots of other things and all. Tell you about Christmas, did she? Yeah. Perhaps if you had been there instead of in the wool pack. Right. Back to house. Time to get dinner ready. He always eats early when he's on nights, so he can have a better sleep in the afternoon. Right, and if she's told you she's coming back clean, you can forget it. Our flurry cleans for nobody. Has something happened, Len? Like what? I've never known you drink in the mornings before. <laughs> Pools come up? That's a laugh, isn't it? I've been made redundant. Oh! Right. Beanstalks. Oh, no. Yes. Well, 
be you. You take them off while I hold the line up. And I'll fix you a new one after Panto's over. You'll do it before that. These are some of Joe and Dolly's clothes for tonight. Well, Annie, I've got to rest, you know. I've got a busy evening in front of me. There's a dress rehearsal. I think I don't know that. Huh. Been hearing naught else for weeks. You can't have a dress rehearsal without dresses. I don't know what you want to go washing them all for. They've been in that big hamper at the vicarage since last Christmas. They're all musty. Oh. Programmes to the hall done, tickets to Mrs. Porter done. Don't forget prom book. No, indeed. <laughs> there it is. Yep. Done. There must be something I can do. No, no, everything's under control. Reserve seats. Excuse me a minute. Let's fill in these cards. Now, to keep on talking, uh, what have you been doing? Been having a chat with Henry Wilkes. A oh, good man, Henry. Yes. Oh, oh nothing wrong. I liked him. And there was something that he said. I thought I detected a note of, uh, oh, I don't know, uh, suspicion. Well, you represent the new company. New landlords, new ways. <laughs> We're a conservative lot in Beckendale. It takes time. I think you'll manage. Wilkes and I are going bird watching. Good. Trouble is, in some ways, I don't have much time. The company already has plans for more farm. Excuse me. Hello, Vicarage. Yes, yes, all, all right, Mr. Porter. Thanks for telling me. <coughs> Excuse me. And I hope your wife will soon get better. Goodbye. Our ticket seller's gone down with flu. Something more to organise. But, Mother, you don't understand. We're going to be rich. Rich beyond our wildest dreams. That will never be, Jack, till you get down to the Labour Exchange and get yourself a job. But... These are magic beans, Mother. With these be... Oh, damn. Emmerdale Farm. Who? Could you speak up a bit, please? Oh, you've got an ice axe. Oh, that's marvellous. Well, yeah, look, could I come up to the oil and collect it? Right, thanks very much. All right, bye-bye. Hey, there's a young man up at the hall who's got an ice axe. Once he kind of Mr West up to remember, he's going to be a great asset to the village. I'll take it we're finished doing lines. Ah, uh, just for the moment. Look, I'll be as quick as I possibly can. Will you be all right on your own? Well, now, why wouldn't I be? Right, see you then. Oh, oh dear. Look, will you keep an eye on the weather and if it comes on to rain, will you get them things in and put them Look, over at the stop panicking and get away. Right, bye-bye, love. Dear me. Planning permission for what? Well, not on my mind, Reader. Come on. Wrong road for Everest. Oh, <laughs> let me in your taxi. Go. Oh. Oh. Right. Right. Oh, you get wet then. Soaked. Oh. oh, that is good of you. I thought when I was halfway back and rain came on, I thought, I wonder if she's remembered. Uh, well, oh. I did have them over the stove to begin with. And then I thought I'd best run an iron over them and then put them back. And then with any luck, they might just be dry oh. before you need them. You had a bath, did you? A sort of. Hmm. How can you sort of have a bath? Well, it was more of a cold shower. Out there? Well, a bit of rainwater never hurt anybody. You're shivering. Oh, you should have had a hot bath straight away. Well, never mind, pet. You go and have yours. There's no point in two of us sneezing, and you've got lines in a pantomime. Oh, 
I don't know what to do without you. Mm -hmm. Honest. Well, let's hope you won't have to for a while yet. Go on, get off. Oh, all right, then. Some makeup and costume to attend to. You can easily wait till George arrives, being a disemboweled voice. Turn them down just a little, please. Oh, no, I said a little. Sorry. Is that all right? Looks just the same as it did before. Sorry. How many times have I been telling you? Oh, I'm sorry, I must be nervous. How are you feeling, Auntie? Don't worry about me now, Pet. Why, doesn't she look lovely? I'm not so bad myself. Oh! <laughs> 20 minutes to go! Attention, everybody! Quiet, please. Now, I, I'd just like to say, whatever happens to Nat, just carry on. All right? You may find the lighting a bit peculiar. Malcolm hasn't had a chance to run through it yet, but I, I assure you it'll all be sorted out by tomorrow. Oh, uh, and if the doors don't open the way you've rehearsed, well, don't worry. And don't wrench them off their hinges, either. <laughs> <laughs> well, good luck, everybody. I'll keep my fingers crossed. Thank you, Mr. Hanson. Thank you. I'm glad I don't have to put all that book on my face. When are you going to shave? Oh, not sacrificing my face, Lorna, more for one performance. Any old giant should have a big red face and a beard. Yes, but nobody's going to see me. Maybe it might help you to get into the swing of things. Are we ready? Yes, yes, from where you stopped. And don't stop to pull the curtains again. Now, you'll have to have this door seen to, Vicar. This is where I planted magic beans, Mother. Are you sure you took them out of the packet first? All they need is a drop of water. Who put water in that can? I'm sorry, Dicker. All right, don't stop. I'm trying to time it. Well, don't you want water in the can? Get off, Sam. That should be enough water, Mother. Is anything happening? Wait. Yes, yes, yes. A tiny green shoot is beginning to appear. Not so fast! <laughs> All right, Sam, can't be helped. With. Go back to the line. Uh, I told you they were magic beans. Oh, right. I told you they were magic beans, Mother. Are you all right? That's good, Sam. I'd best go home, Annie. Ah, Drive you back. Sure. 